Hey guys, it's Flower Friday and it's Dahlia planting day. So today in this video, I'm going to be going through the entire planting process. So all the planting needs, when to plant, where to plant, how to plant, everything you need to know to get your dahlias off to a great start. Now I have a couple of other videos about dahlias that I did within the last couple of months. The first was just kind of explaining how dahlias work. The second one was actually uh, planting them in trays and pre-sprouting them and optionally taking cuttings. So I'm not gonna get into definitely cuttings. I'm not gonna get into in this video again to start them indoors. You want to plant dahlias into the ground when the soil is about at 60 degrees. And so that's when you're planting tomatoes, let's say. So if it's safe to plant tomatoes, it's safe to plant dahlias. So it is probably past, well past your frost date. Um, I would say six weeks, no more than six weeks before that 60 degree mark is when you can start uh, sprouting them inside in trays or in little pots. So I did that a few weeks ago. Our soil is definitely at 60 degrees now, and I've got lots of dahlia plants that I brought into the cold frame, and now they're actually just outside in their pots and trays, and they're ready to start growing in the ground. All of my plants are less than 12 inches tall at this point. Um, if you have grown them indoors and maybe it took a little longer to get your ground to the right temperature or you start them a little early uh, and they're more than 12 inches tall, you want to pinch about three inches off of those. Um, and I know it seems hard to do, but that's not only going to help create a bushier plant, but it's going to get them off to a good start because they're starting too tall and you don't want them to be spindly and falling over. And that's just going to ruin things from the very beginning. So as far as location, dahlias need full sun and that is six to eight hours of full sun, direct sunlight on their leaves every day. Now, if you live in a hot summer climate, like Southern California, certain places, Texas, Arizona, uh, most of the South, then morning sun for your dahlias and afternoon shade would be ideal. I have known of people growing their dahlias under 35% shade cloth. So they get that direct morning sun as it comes in under the shade cloth, and then they are protected in that midday sun. Now, I'm also gonna get into growing dahlias in containers at the end of this video. So if that's what you're here for, stay tuned for that. Uh, but most of this information is going to be whether you're growing in containers or not. So don't skip ahead. You need all this information as well. Dahlias need uh, good watering. They like to be moist at all times in their whole root zone. And so the best way to water dahlias is infrequently and deeply. So maybe three, four times a week, four times probably in the, in the hot summer, um, but you wanna water them deep. So either a hose on trickle or better yet, a drip system that is going to you know, help those roots grow deep and stay moist all the time. If you're just watering the surface of the soil, the roots actually grow up and stay shallow. And then every time that sun comes out and bakes the soil, it's gonna bake the roots. Uh, another good idea for dahlias is mulch. A nice thick layer of mulch on top of them will keep that soil moist better than no mulch at all. Dahlias like warm, free-draining soil. Um, so if you have heavy clay soil, you will want to amend that soil. Some grit, some compost. You don't want to use too much compost, though, because dahlias are gluttons for nitrogen, and they will eat every bit you give them. And that will grow these huge plants, which I think is a good thing, but kind of like tomatoes, you don't want to grow leaves because that is going to be at the expense of more blooms. Not only that, when your dahlia has excess nitrogen in the soil, it grows quickly, which makes it grow spindly and it will flop. And you don't want dahlias to flop. You're gonna to have to tie them to a support as it is, but you at least want them to support themselves as good as they possibly can. And when you have a lot of fast growth, it's gonna flop over. It's also more susceptible to pests and disease. So we wanna, in everything we do, we wanna keep the nitrogen to a minimum. Now the pH of the soil, um, they like it fairly neutral to acidic. So if you've got a, a neutral soil, perfect. If you've got a little bit of alkali soil, you can bring it down with some sulfur. Now, if you've got a really acidic soil, you know, dahlias want between 6.5 and 7, um, you can add some lime to the hole, and that's going to just kind of even things out a little bit for your dahlias. So that's pretty much the requirements. I will get into a little bit more of the fertilizing and things as we get into planting. Right now, let's go check the ones that I have hardened off and that are ready to plant. So one of the reasons I like to pre-sprout dahlias is you know, you know who's working and who isn't. 
A lot of times it can be hard to tell if a dahlia has a growth point or not. And if you put this in the ground and it doesn't have a growth point, you've wasted that space. You're gonna wait around forever and it's not gonna do anything. Another reason to pre-sprout your dahlias is it's very hard to control the moisture outdoors. Dahlias don't need much moisture to pre-sprout. They barely want any moisture at all. What they're looking for is heat. A great way to do that is indoors on a heat mat. These dahlias came in the mail about a week ago and they had almost no growth points that I could see. And I just put them here in the soil, trickled a little bit of water on there, put them on a heat mat, and here we are a week later. Now there's a few things you need before you start planting your dahlias. Number one, the dahlia. Uh, and then there's a couple fertilizers that you may want to have on hand. Um, number one is bone meal. Adds a good amount of phosphorus to get those roots off to a good start. And then the second is kelp meal. I'm using Neptune's Harvest. And you'll notice with both of these, there is no nitrogen involved. And we talked about why before. Another thing you might need if you have a snail or slug problem is some organic snail bait. Now this is Sluggo Plus. I'll leave a link below. This is uh, for use in organic gardening. And that is because there is nothing that snails and slugs love more, except maybe lettuce and hosta leaves, than these brand new fresh green dahlia leaves. Now when you plant, we already talked about the soil temperature needs to be around 60 degrees. And obviously for that, you have to be well past your last frost date, no frosty nights. Um, you also want to make sure the ground is not soggy. We already talked about how dahlias that are not sprouted do not like moisture almost at all. They've got moisture already in their tubers to sustain them. So if you're planting directly in the ground and you don't have sprouts, you can water them a very little bit when you first plant them, and then do not water again until the dahlia is about this big. Now that changes with containers, but we'll get to that in a minute. There would also be another reason where you could want to water before it sprouts this much, and that is if it's extremely hot already and the ground is drying out that fast. But definitely stick your finger in a couple of inches before you water and make sure that you feel even the littlest bit of moisture. If it's bone dry, then water very lightly. All right, so I'm going to move the mulch aside to dig my hole. And as far as spacing goes, you want to, uh, you know, check the size of the dahlia. The average height and spread of a dahlia is about four feet with the spread of about two feet. And so an 18 to 24 inch spacing would be good. All right, so the bottom of the hole, I'm gonna mix in a handful of kelp meal and a handful of bone meal and just mix it up. Again, I'm not amending my soil because I don't have a super heavy clay. I've got clay and decomposed granite, and that mixture means that it will hold moisture, but it's free draining. Not really any roots here I need to break up. And we're gonna plant it so that the tubers are completely underground. If you can get them four inches underground, that would be great, but you also don't wanna cover up a ton of this stem. Now, I'm going to label it, put the label there, and then I'm also going to stake it. You want to stake the dahlia at planting time because you're not going to remember on every dahlia you plant where the tuber is, which way it's facing, where it is underground, and you don't want to, you know, smack the stake right through it. As far as choices for stakes, you can use almost anything. You can use a uh, regular wooden stake, you can use bamboo. Um, I, for years, have been using, I don't know if this is a quarter inch, but rebar. And rebar is a really great choice. Even though it's a little more investment up front, it is almost invisible in the garden, and it lasts literally forever. I bought my rebar stakes that I've been using for dahlias for years. I've had them probably about over 20 years. So to me, that was a good investment. You should have about four feet of stake above the ground and hammered in at least a foot. I'm gonna put the mulch back around and to water it in well. Now I wouldn't do this if there was no sprout and no roots. There was plenty of moisture in the soil already 
to maintain a dahlia tuber that has not sprouted yet. But now that it has, it's able to use the water you give it and not rot. And I'm gonna sprinkle some sluggo around. As a side note, sluggo uh, kills earwigs as well. And those will decimate your dahlias. If you have them in number like I do here, they will eat all of the blooms as they're opening. Now I know a lot of people, every time I have a video about earwigs and killing them, um, I have people saying they're actually beneficial. Well, they do have their benefits, but there is a lot of other things that has their benefits and is not also a pest. And I would choose to keep those. Kind of like politicians. They have their benefits. Most of the time they're a pest. Do we actually need them? One more note, if you are planting your dahlias in the ground and they have not sprouted, don't put mulch on top because that'll keep the ground too cool and moist and you don't want either one of those while you're trying to sprout them. Again, I really recommend sprouting them indoors if possible. And one question about sprouting them indoors that I know I'm gonna get is do I need a grow light? To sprout them, you do not. You can be in a sunny window on a heat map, but they will need to be moved outside as soon as they sprout because otherwise they start stretching and getting leggy just like seedlings and you don't want that. That'll, that'll create a, a spindly plant, weak plant. So I would wait if you don't have a grow light and do it when the ground outside is just about ready. You don't want to have them in the house for six weeks. You only want them in the house until they start to sprout and get maybe an inch tall. If you have a grow light, feel free to grow them inside uh, until they're ready. In terms of fertilizer, these are just gonna get um, Neptune's Harvest rose and flowering. That's what I'm gonna use. It has a, a low first number, a two, and then it's got a six, two for the phosphorus and the potassium, both of which will help with the roots and the blooms. And you want both because during the season, you want tons of blooms, right? And dahlias are great cut flowers. You also want to work on the roots because at the end of the season, you're gonna have an entire clump of dahlia tubers that you can divide and separate or share with friends. So from this one plant, you could get five, six, seven, eight, or more. So that's how you plant them in the ground. Let's go talk about containers. So as far as containers go, I will tell you right off the bat, I don't recommend growing dahlias in containers, uh, mainly because of the watering issue. Dahlias like water, and it's hard to keep a container moist enough, especially in the summer. So if you're gonna do containers, I recommend smaller dwarf varieties. Those do best. You can do any in a container, but as far as water, the dwarf ones are gonna take less water. As far as container size, the bigger the better. The bigger they are, the less extreme uh, variation in dry to, wa to wet conditions because it's got more soil to hold the water. You could also add water holding polymers to the planting mix, which you can get cheaply in uh, baby diapers or adult diapers, I guess. I'll put a link to a video on how to do that down below. But really you want a pot that's about this big. You do not want to use terracotta. They breathe too much. I would also stay away from fabric pots for dahlias. So I already have some potting mix in this container from last year. It's only been in here a year. You don't need to throw it away. People ask me all the time if you need to uh, throw your potting mix away every year. Absolutely not. And there's actually plenty of room in here. So I'm just gonna refresh this by dumping some new in. And then just kind of mixing it in the top layer. If your container was already full, you'd probably dump about a third out and add some new on top. And that's going to settle. Now this is a dark leaf variety that I grew last year and saved over winter. I don't know the variety, just I got it at the garden center and it was an unnamed variety, but the leaves are so dark on it and the flower so vibrant, it just, it looked amazing. And it worked well in a container last year, so I know it's a good variety for that. It's also a smaller dahlia. It's gonna get just about a foot and a half, maybe two feet tall. Oh, we do need to prepare the potting mix. So same as in the ground, handful of the kelp meal, handful of the bone meal, and just mix that in. Planted at the same level it was already growing in the pot. That 
that's it. These will be fertilized a little bit more than the ones in the ground. I will do a half strength fertilizer on a weekly basis to all my potted plants and that just keeps them happy because fertilizer will leach out of a pot way faster than the ground and so you have to replenish that. So that's it guys. If you have any questions, something I missed, please leave those in the comments below. Let me know, do you grow dahlias or are you going to start? If you like this video or learn something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, share it with a gardening friend, and I'll see you next time.